Hello everybody and welcome to the sixth video in this OpenCV Python tutorial series. In this video, what we'll be doing is learning how we can detect corners in an image. Now, the point of this video is not just to show you the corner detection, although that is interesting. It's to give you kind of an introduction to some of the interesting algorithms that OpenCV has built in and how easy they are to actually use. For example, in this video, we're literally going to need to write about three or four lines related to corner detection, and that's all we need to do to find all of the corners in an image. So there's a ton of really interesting stuff you can do with OpenCV. Obviously, I cannot and will not cover all of it in this tutorial series. So if you want to check for yourself some of the things I'm kind of skipping over or not talking about as in depth, then go to the OpenCV documentation. I will link it down below. I will mention that the version of the documentation I'm showing here is not the official documentation. This is kind of, I guess, like a reworked version of the documentation that, in my opinion, is a lot easier to understand and has some better images and visuals and just it just makes it easier to access the information, at least in my opinion. So anyways, this will be uh, the link in the description. For example, the corner detection algorithm we're going to use here is called the Shi Tomasi. Um, I believe that's how you pronounce that. I'm probably wrong corner detector and good features to track. So if you want to hear the theory and math behind this, I'm not going to explain it in this video. I'm not qualified to do so. And I also just think it's kind of unnecessary and boring, uh, but you're welcome to read through that yourself. Again, link in the description. All right. So with that said, let's dive in. The first thing I need to do here is import my module. So I'm going to say import numpy as and then MP. And I'm going to import CB2. Now that we do that, we need to load in an image or we can use a video capture device if we want. Now for this tutorial, I'm just going to use an image. So I have this image here. It's of a chessboard. We're going to load this in and then we'll do the corner detection on this. Now you, of course, can load in any image that you want. It doesn't need to be a chessboard. But if you do want this image, it will be in the GitHub repository. Again, that will be linked in the description. So let's load this in. I'm going to say IMG is equal to then CB2 dot and then uh, what is this? I am read. Sorry. Yep. And then here we're going to do assets slash and then chess board dot PNG. So I have that inside of my assets folder. Uh, if you get this from GitHub, you as well will have it in the assets folder. All right. Now that I have this, uh, let's actually just quickly display this. So I'm going to say CV2 dot and then I am show. I'm going to I am show, I guess, frame and then we will show IMG. Call this whatever you want, doesn't matter. I'll say cv2 dot wait key. We'll wait infinitely for us to press anything. And then cv2 dot destroy all windows. All right, so let's load this up. We can see that our chessboard appears. But now notice our chessboard is quite large. I don't want my chessboard to be this large, so let's resize it and make it a bit smaller. So I'm going to say IMG is equal to and then cb2 dot resize. We're going to resize the image. We're going to pass 0, 0 here. And then we're going to pass our FX equals and let's go 0 0.75 and FY equals and 0 0.75 as well. All right. So let me try this now. We should see our chessboard is a bit smaller. That's awesome. Okay. So it just about fits on the screen. Great. So now that our chessboard is resized, what I actually need to do is convert this to a grayscale image. So a lot of the times when you're dealing with these types of algorithms where you're detecting edges or features or corners, you're going to be converting your image to grayscale before you pass it to these algorithms. That's just because these algorithms work on grayscale images and it's easier for them to detect these features in a grayscale image than a uh, BGR or RGB colored image. So what I'm going to do here is say image is equal to and then CV2. And we've already seen this before. This is going to be dot CVT color. We're going to pass our image and then we're going to pass the uh, color that we want to convert this to. So CV2 dot color underscore. And then we're going to say BGR two and then gray like that. So now that should convert our image to grayscale. Let's run this and see. And there we go. We do indeed get this uh, grayscaled image. Now, notice it doesn't look any different because, well, it was already grayscale before. It was just black and white, but this is grayscale and it is working. All right. So now we have that. What we can actually do is we can now run our corner detection algorithm. So once we've converted this to grayscale, what we can say is that our corners is equal to and then CB2. And the name of this method here is good features to track. I, I don't know why they named it this. A lot of the naming and kind of conventions I have here, I don't find too intuitive, but this is going to run that algorithm I discussed, which is the she, what is this? She Tomashi corner detector and good features to track. So all this is saying is that it's just going to return to you all of the corners from an image. I don't know why they have to make it confusing with good features to track. 
Anyways, again, link in the description for that. So now that we have all of the corners, or sorry, now that we've written this function, we need to pass some arguments to it. So the arguments for this function are the following. You need to pass your source image, the image you want to detect the corners from. Then you need to pass the number of corners that you want to return, or more specifically, the number of best corners that you want to return. So you pass some integer here. Let's call this integer n, and this will return to you the 100 best or the n best, um, what do you call it, corners from the image. So if your image has like 500 corners that this algorithm detects, it will return to you the n best of those corners. So let's just go with 100 here. You can make this whatever you want. I'm just going to pick 100. Next, we have to pick the minimum quality for our corners. So the quality of a corner is between 0 and 1. So 1 would be a perfect corner. 0 would be a corner where there's like no confidence that that is a corner. And it's hard for me to really explain what the quality really means, because that's kind of uh, due to the implementation of the algorithm. So again, read the documentation if you want to see exactly how that works. But pretty much if you make this number really small, you're going to get corners that are probably corners, but that the program's not 100% sure they are. Whereas if you make this number larger, say like 0 0.5, then you're going to get only corners that the program's pretty certain are corners. So it's kind of a degree of confidence when it's looking and finding these corners. And well, that's what you're picking right here. What's the minimum quality you want? I can say from experience, putting it at 0 0.01 is probably fine. But if you notice that you're getting a bunch of things that aren't corners, then slowly increase this value upwards. Then after we have that, the last thing that we need to return is actually the minimum Euclidean distance between corners that are returned. So a lot of times what will happen is if you have a corner that's like slightly rounded, it will return to you like 500 points that are all right on that corner. Um, so it will detect, you know, a bunch of different corners that is really just one corner. So what you put here is some value, which is telling you the minimum distance between two corners. So if you had two corners that were really close, then what you would do is make a value here like 10. And this means, hey, I'm not going to return both of those corners. I'm only going to return one and specifically the best of that one because these corners are too close together. And well, I don't want to return ones that are too close. So Euclidean distance is simply the absolute distance between two points on a graph or in this case in an image. So if you were at, say, 10, 10 and 20, 20, then you would have some Euclidean distance between those two points. So the way you calculate Euclidean distance is actually using Pythagorean's theorem. Now, I know I've butchered the way you say that. I can never say that correctly. But the basic equation for Euclidean distance, if you're working in two dimensional space, so X, Y um, dimensions here, then you would have some points, say, like X1 and Y1. And then you would have another point, say, like X2 and Y2. And the way you calculate this is you take the square root. So SQRT of, and then that's going to be X2 minus X1 to the exponent. So let's go hat two. I know this isn't proper syntax, but you get the idea. And then I'm pretty sure that is plus uh, that's now going to be Y2 minus Y1 to the exponent two. So that is Euclidean distance. And the reason this works is because you're literally just performing Pythagorean's theorem. You're looking at a right angle triangle. You're figuring out the distance of, I guess it's the, uh, oh, I've been out of math for a long time now. The distance between the adjacent and the opposite uh, sides, I guess. And then you're calculating the length of the hypotenuse, which is going to be the distance between those two points. So I think I've probably butchered that explanation a little bit. I don't claim to be a, you know, a god at math or anything, but this is the formula for Euclidean distance. It's pretty much just the straight line distance between two points. So anyways, that's what this is telling you is that the Euclidean distance between two corners must be greater than this for you to include that corner. All right. So now that we have that, what we want to do is display these corners on the screen. So we will continue in one second, but I need to quickly thank the sponsor of this video and the series, which is Algo Expert. Algo Expert is the best platform to use when preparing for your software engineering coding interviews. They have over 125 coding interview questions. They have behavioral interview tips, a data structures crash course, mock interviews, and a ton of other helpful features. Get started with Algo Expert today by clicking the link in the description and using the code Tech with Tim for a discount on the platform. So the first thing that we need to do here is we need to convert these corners into integers. So by default, when it returns to it, these corners, in fact, let me just show you, let's, let's print out corners here. You're going to notice that the data type of these corners is actually float. So let's have a look. So let me just quit this. 
and we'll look right here. And what you can see here that all these values are floating point values. Now, this is no good. We don't want floating point values. And the reason we don't want floating point values is because we want to use these values here to actually draw our corners. Now, what we're going to do is kind of extract these values and we're just going to draw circles where all of these points are so we can see where all of our corners are. Notice how many it's giving me here. So I need to convert these into integers to do that. It's actually pretty straightforward. We're going to say that corners is equal to and then NP dot. And then I believe this is actually called int zero. So we're going to say int zero. So I had to reference my notes there and then we're going to pass in corners. Now this will just take our NumPy array that has those floating point corners and turn them into integers. All right. So now that I have that, what I want to do is draw these corners. So obviously I have multiple corners and notice that if you look at these corners here, they're actually returned to us in a similar shape to our image. So we have like all of these corners inside of two NumPy arrays. So that's going to be something that we have to deal with. But just notice that we have our one array and then inside of two arrays here, two lists, we have our points. So we are going to have to kind of decompose that and deal with that here. Uh, but I will show you how we do that. So anyways, I'm going to loop through all my corners. So I'm going to say four corner in corners like that. And then what I want to do is I want to decompose these corners. So first of all, let me just show you what I mean by this. So if I print out my corner now in this for loop, you're going to see that after we close this and we look here, this is what's printing out, right? We're getting an array inside of an array. So I obviously need to take this interior array and then use that as a point for drawing my circle. So we could do something like this. We could say that corner is equal to corner zero, and then that would give us one array that has the X, Y values. But there's actually a uh, method in NumPy that can help us do this. So if I say X, Y is equal to and then corner dot and then I have to look at this. I believe this is called Ravel. What this actually does is flatten an array. So if you're given something that looks like this uh, and you have, you know, some elements in it, what Ravel does is it just takes this array and completely flattens it. Now, when you say flatten, all that means is remove all the interior arrays. So we'll get rid of these two brackets and these two brackets, and it will just give you all of the uh, remaining elements. So even if you had something that was like this and you had like one comma two and then like two comma one, then what would happen is it would just give you a new array here that would look like this one, two, two, one. It would just flatten it for you. So anyways, what's going to happen is when we have our point that looks like this, so X, Y, it will flatten it. So the array now becomes X, Y. And then in Python, there's something called tuple or list decomposition. So we'll take these two elements and then just place them into the two variables. So X will be equal to X and Y will be equal to Y. So that's what corner dot ravel is going to do. Now that we have the corner, we can actually draw the corner. So to draw the corner, we're going to say uh, CV2 dot and then circle. This is why I showed it to you in the last video or in, I guess, video four. I'm going to say image. I'm going to put the center of my circle, which is going to be X, Y. Make sure this is a tuple and that you don't just pass this corner dot ravel here because that won't work. Then after you have that, you want to pass the radius. So let's make the radius of this say five. We now need a color. So this is going to be in BGR. So let's make these blue. So 25500. And then we need a thickness of the line or a fill. Now I want to fill in my circle. So I'm going to make a negative one. So now we'll draw that on the image and then display the image. So we should see all of our corners. So let's run this and notice that we do see these corners here, but for some reason they're showing up white. And actually I'm realizing that the reason these are showing up white is because our image is still in grayscale. So if I want to convert my image back into a colored image, then I'll have to do something to do that. So these are actually being drawn as blue, but since our image is in grayscale, it's just showing them as white. So we need to not show the image that is grayscale. In fact, we should show the image that is colored. So what I'm going to do, and this is instructive, I probably should have done this at the beginning, is rather than doing all of my, I guess, image manipulations on the grayscale image, all I'm going to do is have my gray here. So I'll say gray is equal to then cv2.cvt color. And I will use that to detect the corners, but then I will draw the corners on my colored image. So now rather than converting the original image into grayscale, uh, what I will do is make a new image that is grayscale. I will find the corners in that new image, and then I will just draw the corners on the colored image. So this should work now. That's what I did here by changing this to gray and changing this here to gray. So let's save this and run and let's see. And there we go. So now we're getting all of the corners. It's missed a few just because you can't really detect a corner here. 
because there's just a ton of black and it's bordering there. Uh, but you can see that it's giving us, you know, pretty much all the corners except for these two black ones, which is to be expected. So now that we have all these corners, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw lines between these corners. Now, I can't really zoom in here to see if it's showing multiple circles here uh, for these corners, like if it's detecting multiple corners. I don't think it is, but there is a possibility that multiple circles are being drawn on top of each other. Um, that shouldn't happen because of the Euclidean distance thing that we have, but it just, to me, I don't know, I'm looking at it, it looks like there might be multiple ones drawn there. Uh, anyways, we'll see when we start drawing these lines, but what I'm going to do now, just to kind of add some nice spin to this, is we are going to draw randomly colored lines between every single one of these corners. So every combination of corners will have a line drawn between them. So I just want to show you this because I think it's interesting. So I'm going to go and say 4i in range, and then this is going to be the len of our corners. I am then going to say 4j in range, and then the len of our corners like that. I'm going to say that, oops, uh, corner one is equal to, and then corners at index i. And then I will say corner two is equal to, and then corners at index j. And I also will, sorry, just do a quick fix here. I'm going to say i plus one to len of corners. So what this is going to do is loop through all of the corners. Then it's going to loop through all of the other corners that we haven't already looped through. That's why I have i plus one here. We're going to get two pairs of, or we're going to get a pair of corners, I guess. So two corners, corner one and corner two. And then we're going to draw a line between these two corners. So now that we have these two corners here, all we have to do is convert these to tuples because these are going to be lists by default. So we have to say tuple and tuple. This will take this list and convert this to a corner. And then I will say cv 2line and I will draw a line on my image between corner one, corner two. It's going to have a color. This color is going to be a random color. So I'll show you how we do that one second. And then the thickness of the line will just make one. So I think that's all we need for the line. But now what I want to do is figure out what this color value is going to be. So I'm going to say color and then is equal to and then n pi or n p sorry dot random dot rand int. And what I can do here is I can pass a high value or sorry, a low value, a high value, and then the shape or the a number of random elements that I want to generate. So in this case, if I say zero and 255, because I want to generate here three random values between zero and 255 so that I can generate a random color, right? A random value for blue, random for green, random for red. Uh, and then the amount of these that I want. So the size is equal to three. So this will kind of be a shortcut to what we did in one of the previous videos to generate a random number where now we will just have uh, this one function that can do it all for us. Now, the only issue with this is that this returns to us a list and these random ints are not necessarily integers. Now, I know this is weird, but it's actually going to return to us a 32 or 64 bit integer, and we only want an 8 bit integer. Now, this is just kind of one of the things with NumPy. NumPy has a bunch of different types for all of their integer values. In Python, it works a little bit different, like your standard Python integer data types versus your NumPy integer data types. So, because of this small nuance here, we need to convert these integers that are generated into regular Python integers so that they are not NumPy 64 32 bit integers, which we don't want. So to do this, we're going to map this. Uh, this will actually be instructive as well. I can say map. And then what I will do is I will put a function that I want to apply to every single one of these values. So the way that map works is you put a function. So I'm going to write a function. I'll explain this in one second. And what this will do is it will apply this function to every single element in your array here, and then it will return a new array that has all of the results from this function. So in this case, I wrote what's known as an anonymous function. It's a lambda function. So if you want to write a one line function and you don't want to define one yourself, you can write lambda, then you can write x. So this is going to be like the parameter for the function. And then your return value comes after this colon. So in this case, x will be every single element from this randomly generated uh, list of integers. And then we'll just take that and convert it into a regular Python integer because we have int here. So it'll return to us that int. We will add all of those ints into a new list. And then that's what map will give us. And then finally, after this, we need to convert this into a tuple because we can't have a list for our color. It needs to be a tuple. And then we can put here color. So I understand that this is probably a little bit confusing, especially if you're not 
uh, more experienced Python programmer. But map again, all it does is map all of the values from an array to a function or uses a function to map all of the values, returns you a new array that has all of those values. Then you convert this into a tuple and then we can use that as the color for our line. So now that we have that, all I have to do is run this and you're going to see we're going to get kind of a bunch of just random lines showing up on the screen here. So let's run this and I got an error. So let me look into this and I will be right back. All right, so I was just looking into this issue here and I realized that we ran into a pretty silly mistake. So when I'm referencing corners I and corners J, I have to remember that we haven't done this corner dot ravel thing, right? We haven't flattened it, which means that corners I is really this kind of two sided array like this, right? It has two uh, array inside of an array. So the way that we have to combat this is we need to just take the zero with index of this. So what this will do is give us the interior array, because since we have something that looks like this X, Y, we just want X, Y. And so if we index this exterior array at zero, that will give us the interior array, which is the first element. So this should hopefully fix our problem for us. So let me run my program now and let's see if this works. And there we go. This does indeed work. And notice that we have all kinds of lines going around the screen, a line thickness of one between every single corner. So I just want to show you that. I don't know. I think this was interesting and it just shows you what you can kind of do with OpenCV. So in the next video, I think we're going to get into potentially object detection or facial recognition. Uh, we're going to be doing some interesting stuff. I hope you guys are looking forward to it. And with that said, if you enjoyed, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in another YouTube video.